Welcome to the Cub Den of Love. Hi. <laughs> we're just having our den meeting. Bobcats, do or die! Uh, Crow, why don't you tell them what we've done so far? Well, we worked on, then gave up on, our Pinewood Derby car, finished the pipe cleaner owl, crafted a macaroni replica of Van Gogh's self-portrait with bandaged ear, and we sang a song about trees. Right, and uh, hey, where's Tom for all of this anyway? Present! <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Let's go. <laughs> Tom, I don't quite know how to tell you this, but... Uh, You're a brownie, Tom. I know I'm a brownie. I'm not stupid, you know. Jeez. Well, brownie doesn't really work with a whole Cub Scout idiom, does it? Yeah, I think it's illegal. Look, yeah. you try wearing little shorts over a hover skirt. I got a great deal on this at Value Village. And besides, it's quite freeing. <laughs> now, are we going to eat cupcakes and play mall ball or what? We'll be right back. Just think of me as a shebelow. Um, no. And a uh, nice use of ziti for the hat. I think yeah. that gives it a real... Aw, oh, now what the hell are you? Hey, back off, okay? Whoa. It's my Flemish glass blower costume. I bought it. I wanted to get some use out of it. Yeah, take it easy. I grabbed it out of the bin. It was on sale. What? You'd rather I grab the Spanish quarters and get up? Ah, uh, Pearl's call. I mean, come on! Hello, Mike. Crow, Flemish glass blower. In my quest to become a fully accredited mad scientist, I've overlooked some of the simpler experiments that got me interested in mad scientist of the... Brainball, help me out here. What? A mad scientist yeah, I didn't know mad scientist stabulinism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. For instance, you take a potato, push a four-inch piece of zinc wire into one end, a four-inch piece of copper wire into the other end. You now have a crude battery. Next, get your assistant to cut power to all the major cities of the world. Cutting off power to New York, London, Tokyo, Mondulac. Send your talking monkey out to buy hundreds of tons of potatoes, control the world's supply of power, and soon you will rule the universe. It's that easy. <laughs> yes, where are they, my precious? Oh, did I... Wanted me to get you something, didn't you? Oh. <laughs> well, I was at the co-op and I got distracted by these delicious smoothies. Potatoes, you idiot! Potatoes! Oh, that's it! That's why I got a potato smoothie. Oh, we're ruined. Ruined. Unless, Mike, you're huge and pink. You must have potatoes around there. Uh-huh. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, uh, no. Uh, I oh, you know, I had one that I was saving, but, uh... It's pretty soft, and the eyes are all grown out. Ew, plus the one side is all mushy and green. Ugh. I don't care. Uh, brain guy, send it down quick. Yes, triumph is mine. This potato will power the satellite link, allowing me to announce to the world. Ugh, Oh, never mind. Brain guy, send him the movie. Foggy Creek 2, and the legend continues. Right. Oh, and you better restore power to all the world's capitals and send him a note of apology in a box of steaks. You know, my smoothie gives me great power. 
No, just hit yourself. Okay. Dear Boston, sorry about cutting off the power. Please accept these box of steaks as a recompense. Uh, Pearl, I've got plenty of frozen okra. And rutabagas conduct electricity. Yeah. We're not going to eat this white hominy if you'd like that. Don't move oh, it down! <laughs> My okra, huh? It's good okra. <sighs> and the legend continues to be not heard about by anyone. <laughs> this is rich man, poor man font. You're right. Pierced chalk, a dollar forty-nine a pound. From the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, Jim Clam. Already, there's too much piercing in this movie. Well, that's a half-hearted attempt at a porn name. Don Dan Atkins. James Jeems Tennyson. <laughs> oh, we were with the Vanderbergs and Charles and Pat, and I decided to make The Legend of Boggy Creek, too. Uh, Frank, where's the music? Uh, it should have it done by the time it reaches those dollar theaters. That's Charles B. in over his head, Pierce. Uh, I'm up, I'm up. Yeah, the sun has a hard time getting up when we switch to daylight savings time. The swamps of southern Arkansas. There's a legend of a beer in these swamps. Stretching out for miles and miles. The beginning of a new day. Full of thick southern promise been repeating itself for centuries upon centuries over these bottom lands. He said bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these great cypress have stood here before the Vikings sailed the seas in their long ships. It was like 1962, right? Towering above this backwatered country, watching and listening to a multitude of life, old and new. This is the story of fried pork rinds. It is here that rivers are born and creeks and sloughs branch off and cross this vast wilderness. Good for dumping poisons. Leaving dense thickets and big timbers that rise up out of this murky, soggy earth. We're trying to get a new NASCAR track in here. Jim Stafford's bathwater. <laughs> Beaver, mink, birds, raccoons, snakes, and alligators are but a few of the creatures that make up the swamp's legend. Mostly it's worms and chiggers. Sometimes it's eerie, and sometimes pristine. Hmm? But it is ever alive and alert. And it's got a gun, so don't try anything. The Sulphur River makes its way south from here. Ew. Heading for the Mississippi and then on to the salt water of the Great <laughs> Gulf. It is along this river and its tributaries that decades ago a legend was born. But what the hell is that? A legend that told of a huge, hairy, man-like creature that lives and roams these rivers and swamps. But this? I don't know what this is. It is said that he stands over eight feet tall and can weigh as much as 300 pounds. Thick hair covers almost his entire body. Although he is thinning on top. Oh, fur kills? Man, that's right. It is hot today. It is from this tributary that the creature got its name. His name is Tributary? This is Boggy hmm. Creek. It branches off from the river and makes its way through the swamp. And the believability of the sightings along Boggy Creek are rated very high. By J.D. Power. For most of them have been reported by experienced hunters and fishermen. Made their way deep into this backwatered country. We will march into the Forbidden Zone. So everyone wants to know, where the hell am I going with this? Is it man? I don't know, man. Could it be a creature? Or is it myth? How would I know? Spin, spin, spin. No one really knows. Look, I'm sorry I even brought it up. So the legend continues. Oh boy, I'm not continuing like I used to when I was a kid, let me tell you. Huh, <laughs> huh, 
I'm going to wander into a suburb, panic, and crash through a school window. <laughs> Come on, Flower. Hand over the pollen. That's right. And another thing about being a deer. Why do we have to cross at the deer crossing sign? Oh, heck. I should have brought my swim trunks. <laughs> Suddenly, flying low under the radar, two armed egrets. He has a zipper on his neck. It's a gazelle in a deer costume. Oh. It was the 3rd of December. Chica, 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 chica. He's hitching a ride on the back of a snapping turtle. Ew, mucky bottom, mucky bottom, ew. You see, this guy's never going to slalom. He can't even get out of the water. Ironically, that was Bambi's stepmother. Honey, honey, where'd you go, honey? Honey, honey, honey. honey. Oh, I'm just gonna take a little nap. Oh. Typical deer hunter. And meanwhile, his wife is off watching the Chippendales with her girlfriends. It's okay. Deer spontaneously regenerate bodies. They're punting the deer's head! They're waving giant tribbles. The cheerleaders suggest that we go. I'm going! The cheerleader's plan is working! A bearded egg and a tie. Black power. Eh, you take it. <laughs> they took our advice and started winning. We have attached our egos to you. Mm. Wow, that antelope has a lot of degrees. Oh, yeah? Hello? I mean, Dr. Lockhart's office. Yes, I'm skinnier. Yep. Yes, sir. He's at the game, sir. Get him. Sir, he's at the stadium with 75,000 insane hog callers. They're calling insane hogs? Yes, sir. Right. Right away, sir. Your halftime show. Yo, yo, ma, and the entire Bach cello suite. I'm going to leave in the first quarter to beat the rush. There's a chick pee. The stadium is built next to a giant brawn coffee grinder. Sir, sir, your fly is open. I saw it from across the field. Just resuscitate the patient. I'll be there at the half. Who is that skinny guy who just talked to me? Well, the Razorback hat lacks the quiet dignity of the cheese wedge. Mm -hmm. We welcome accountants in section four. <laughs> Get your tongue out of my ear. What are you... I heard that. Yes, sir. I'm ready for some football. Listen, we appreciate you calling us. We should be in Texas kind of before dark, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck. All right. We got everything. Uh, got the Jeep, camper, got the computer, mic sensors. Everything but the mic sensors. Okay. Where's your friend Leslie? She should be here any time. Yeah, go ahead and get the mic sensors, put them in. Uh, Mike's right here. Oh, uh, got, uh, <laughs> all right. Um, Hi. Keyboardist from fame. <laughs> Anybody tell you where we're going? Yep, Texarkana. There's a disco there, right? They tell you where we're going to be in the woods most of the time? Well, she said we're going down looking for some kind of wild man. Why? I am that wild man. You just don't look like you're dressed for the occasion. What about my jeans and shorts? 
How will they dress for the trip? I certainly hope so. Load up and let's go. <laughs> now I'm both thieves. My name is Brian C. Lockhart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My friends call me Doc. And I'm a professor of anthropology at the University of Arkansas, located deep in the Ozark Mountains. I'm a dim-witted left. With me, one of my freshman students, Tim Thorne. My snap towel manager. That's Lan Walker. All I know about her, she's a good friend of Tanya Yazi, one of my prize students. Prize student in that she gets seized, but she's really cute. We're going camping, and you're going to watch. After my call from the Miller County Sheriff's Department, we were soon leaving the rolling hills of northern Arkansas behind and headed for the swamps. Hey, the tomb of the unknown cracker. Tim had a bladder the size of a thimble. Here's where the legend works the night shift. Even this place has a great website. Can I help you? Yes, do you sell turquoise plastic pith helmets? Good evening. Do you uh, have any ammunition? Yes, sir. We both forgot our teeth. I need a box of 30-30 shells. Regular hollow point. Doesn't matter. Want this on your clan account? Y'all going camping? I guess you could say that. We're looking for the Boggy Creek creature. I married her! <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no such thing, you know. I know, but we got this funding. I guess that's why we're here. We're going to try to determine if there is one or not. You can take my word for it. There ain't no monsters around here. Well, then do you have any puffy hats with filthy things? I believe that's about all we need. Hey, boy, where do you think you're going to find that monster? Let me alone, you guys. I'm going to find him in the swamp if it exists. Well, he don't. Mm. He's been seen over a hundred times since the early 50s. Seen by who? Drunks or city folk like you all want your name in the newspaper? <laughs> okay, call up your dogs. What owe you? You want to contribute to our fund for the war against northern aggression? So that's money. Usually we get paid in possum hides. You know something, well, I don't like your neck sweat. We ought to go down there to that swamp tonight <laughs> with the monkey suit, and these here folks would stay tomorrow night in the motel in the city. <laughs> that ain't gonna work now. We're only standing right there. <laughs> you know something? I believe there's a creature here. There it is! And being a city fella like I am, I'm scared to death of it. That's why I got a 30-30 rifle in the back of that Jeep. I bought this box of shells. Liberal! In fact, I'm so afraid of it. I just might shoot a monkey if it jumped out on me. Andy! Good day, sir. And I will not call again. <laughs> on the wings of a snow-white dove, he sends his pure sweet love. A sign from above. From above. It's the Orville Faubus Museum. I got nipple rub. Oh, him. That's W.L. Slogan's farm that we studied about right there. W.L.? Do you think he'll let us go look in the barn? Yeah, let's go look in it. Besides, we might find something. Come run up to the farmhouse and see if they'll let us go down to the barn and look around, okay? You threaten them with your physique. Can I borrow a cup of shirt? I bet she didn't want us around here. I don't want you around here. Okay. Hey, y'all, come on! Come on. You guys can use the toilet, but she says I can't. So these three are all majoring in Boggy Creek studies? Mm -hmm. And he falls in and gets eaten by pigs. Late in the afternoon, Logan came 
That steel there driving his cows. One of them blew a tire. He had to put him in that stall right there. But it was in this barn where he saw the creature. Let's just look in here, man. Yeah, when you major in Boggy Creek Studies, you can write your own ticket on Wall Street after you graduate. Yeah. Okay, people without shirts, please put them on, and people with shirts, please take them off. You know, they said Slogan was in his late 60s. God, I said that well. I think it was in about 63 or 64. It was 64. That's correct. It was in the fall of the year. <laughs> in fact, it was probably about this time of day, late afternoon. Jeez, do a push-up, kid. <laughs> Coming from that field, drove those cows over here in the stall. Turn off the lights and let me project my thoughts. Come on, here. get up there. Get in there. You're in so much trouble jumping over the moon. <laughs> Have a good time in there, you two. My memory had cheesecloth over it at this point. <laughs> sure, Crow now. It's 11.30. The cows had a mutilation they had to go to. If I'm not mistaken, that's Jack! Right. He cuts a dashing figure in his white Panama hat. Looks like Tom Wolf. Well, no sense closing the barn door after the cows. Hey, I invented an aphorism. Ted Nugent? Slash? Rob Zombie? Cher? Yeah, Cher. Hey, Legend, how's the continuing going? Well, no more corn liquor on my total for breakfast. Well, I'll be damned. Farmers do exist. I am so much better than this barn. Yeah, we're driving down the road, looking for a Waffle House, drinking lots of wild turkey. Yeah. <laughs> knock it off, you big lizard! You knock it off too, you big brown elf! Hey, 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 you two, come on, come on, what are you fighting about? Um... Huh. I don't know. <laughs> the usual, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, oh, now you made me forget what I came up here for. Well, I'll help you, Mike. I'll just use a flashback like in the movie. Huh. It was 15 or 20 seconds ago. I remember it like it was just yesterday. Servo and I were fighting about God knows what, and you came in and separated us. After a smattering of dialogue, you discovered that you forgot why you're here. There. That should take care of it for you, Mike. Hmm. Well, your flashback was a little sketchy in that it told me nothing. Here, let me give it a shot. <clears throat> it was a few years back, long before Crow's flashback. I saw two well-muscled Olympian figures locked in gymnasial sport. Suddenly the Kraken appeared, casting us under the two demigods, and then engaging them in a Socratic symposium on the verisimilitude of memory. Ah, uh, and then it starts to get a bit hazy. That's amazing, Servo. You're better than that guy who wrote that thing about remembering stuff. Hey, thank you. Okay, spread out, you two naughty-pated mushrooms. I'll show you what actually happened. Okay, there's these two objects I can't quite... Uh, oh, okay, now a big blue shadow. Man, this is awful. I can't make heads or tails out of... Oh, wait a minute. I, I just figured it out. I... I I remembered I came up here to get my contacts. <laughs> of course, it all makes sense now. We'll be right back. Hey, next time I'm gonna have a car chase in my flashback. Uh, cool. That was Alan Jackson.
Come hand me that mouth out of there. I'll check something there. I'm gonna look at we for a while. Let's see. That sign back there said Sulphur River. Are we there yet? We're close. And then got about a mile or so more. Good. I can finally change these clothes. Well, you can go ahead and change your clothes now if you want. That would be okay. Not really. Man, those bushes are right on my bumper. <laughs> Thank goodness for the Jeep's braking distance of 500 yards. Huh. He suddenly became a senior citizen. Wait, we got firearms, but we don't have any liquor. You always in Jeep. Me and the Castrato will check this out. Guess it fell out of the monster's pocket. Posing for the spring break pictures. Hey Doc, what is it? Ah, ah, Mike is batch. Oh, it's oh, oh, I know, like I, know. I know. Oh. Go look at it. No way! I'm not gonna go down there and look at a dead deer. It's horrible. No oh, man. Oh, my friends got me drunk and left me out here. What time is it, man? Looks like a car or truck hit him not long ago either. What happened to his head? <laughs> I don't know. What happened to the car or truck is the question. I don't believe any car or truck hit this deer. <laughs> Why do you say that? Something's been eating on its right hind quarter. Uh -huh. Doesn't matter, let's get it out of the road before somebody else runs over and has a wreck. I still don't believe any car or truck hit this deer. You need to work on your camel toe, son. <laughs> well, doesn't matter, it's probably bobcat, coon, or something. Who knows? Maybe it belongs to the creature. <clears throat> hey, can I get a sheet or some underpants or something? Hey, your head has a retractable dome. Hmm. You know, this roadkill ain't that bad. Hmm. Wait a minute, what kind of camping is this? There's no RV hookups. I claim this land for Arkansas. We're close to the swamp. Okay, Ponce de Leon. We're going to make camp right here. Right here. Oh, man, I left my hose on all night. <laughs> okay, sniff your arm sweat. Calm down. That's it. Hey, everybody, I managed to cram my ass into these shorts. Robin Williams. That's pretty good, Tim. He needs a bra. In fact, I'd say that that's pretty oh, close that. to what it actually looks like. <laughs> Let me see. Mm. <laughs> You've got Damn. to be kidding. Nope. Fits all the descriptions. You mean to tell me that we're camped down here in the swamp where that thing might be living? <laughs> well, I think he's sexy. Yeah. I think we're all crazy <laughs> if we don't go to town and get a motel room. I wouldn't worry a lot about it. I don't think it's been seen in a few days anyway. Although they appear to be docile and never intentionally harmed anyone, they do anyway. There is one incident that's always intrigued me. Seeing those underpants. It was sometime in the fall, a few years back. An elderly gentleman by the name of Otis Tucker was on his way home from grocery shopping in Texarkana when he had a blowout on a lonely stretch of road that runs parallel to the swamp. Let's watch and enjoy. Fortunately, he was wearing pull-ups because of his frequent blowouts. <laughs> My flashback wasn't color-corrected when it came back from the lab, so it's kind of dark. Zip. Huh. Hey. Oh, good Lord of mercy. Um, yes? I got to get home and not talk to my wife. No, oh, there's my Johnny Cake pan. 
Yeah, I gotta get going. I'm trying to cook a pork shoulder on my exhaust manifold. Hello. Look, you gonna keep filming or you gonna help me with the tire? Anybody there? Woods are just crammed with those Y2K survivalists. <laughs> So, a guy changed the tire. The believability rating is quite high here. Ken Burns, six-part series, tire changing. He had a tight lug nut, plus he had a bad back, which didn't help any. Anybody there? Just think of the raccoons that have died at this guy's hands. Otis didn't believe in flashlight batteries. Oh, Otis Tucker never regained consciousness. He was dead, so it makes sense. He stayed in a hospital for over two years. Therefore, he was never able to tell anybody what happened to him. Circles. What do they represent? Round things. Well, see this first line? That's 200 meters. Then we come into 75, 50. And of course, the square here, that represents the home base. But we should be able to sit right here and monitor this whole area. Uh -huh. hmm, so you mean if anything approaches the camp, we should be able to see it? Depends on how sensitive we set these sensors. Mm. Uh, for instance, there are two ways we can do it. We can set this up for weight, or we can set it up for height. Mm -hmm. so let's run this first test on weight. For instance, Tanya is about 110 pounds, so I'm going to enter that in now. 107. Okay. Tim, I'd say, is about 130. Excuse me, 128. That's in. Now, there's one other thing we've got to do. Love. We need to set this at anything over 100 pounds to set it off, so because like snakes or small animals, raccoons or something, we don't want it to set it off. Yeah. Let's raise them on the radio and run our test. Right. Tanya, do you read? Third grade level. Yeah, I read. It's just me and a whole bunch of bloodthirsty mosquitoes. Mm. <laughs> Tim, do you read? Loud and clear. Hey, Doc, how long do you want me to wait out here? I'm getting hungry. Here, let me talk to Stick Boy. That boy is always hungry. <laughs> okay. Gang, we're all set up here. Um, I'll tell you what I want you guys to do now. Me. I want you to start back to the base, and I want you to come directly at me and try to come in a straight line, okay? Gotcha. Okay, Dad. I, I mean, Professor, who is in no way my dad giving me a role in this movie. Okay. Okay, there's Tim, see? Okay, see this dot? That's Tanya. She just broke the first uh, 200 meters right there. I hope the radar doesn't detect I'm not wearing a bra. Nature is grody. Okay, baby is working like a charm. The marvels of modern science. Boy, Tim's a real strong blip on my gaydar. Brian, what's that? Well, that's the computer I was just telling you about. I don't know. Something broke to the southwest corner of the perimeter there. It's moving toward Tanya. Don't panic now. Hold this a minute. Mm -hmm. Could be a deer, could be a cow or anything. Could be Bernie Taupin, it could be a Pilates machine, anything. Let me put some weight in and see what it says. I'll go to 250. Oh crap, they wiped out my identity again. Oh, I'm going to download Pong. It should only take about seven hours. Each key is separately mic'd for your convenience. William Perry. Hmm. A problem. Yeah, yeah, hold on, I gotta announce the luncheon specials. Tanya, I don't want to alarm anybody, but wrong. You just broke the southwest corner of the perimeter. Do you hear or see anything? I hear my tummy growling, and I see lots and lots of trees. Doc, I don't see a thing. Can I get a drop slip? <laughs> it's moved more than fifty yards in the last few seconds. <laughs> Something's out there. And it's mm -hmm. heading toward Tanya. Tell him to come in, Brian. 
You guys, I want you to come back to the base. And I want you to come back quickly. Tim, come on, move it. Get in here now. Come on, Tanya, move. We'll see Brawless. <laughs> I want you to stay on this mic and watch that screen here. Take this. I'm going out there. There's something wrong. Run, girl, run! Go, fight, go! Keep me posted. Wow, someone had a huge Toblerone bar. No. Dr. Batch, this fall. <laughs> yeah. Let's get physical. Physical. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. Give me a walk. Is it him? I don't know. Keep going. Get the camp. Is he wearing pantyhose? I guess. A bunch of schmoos are attacking. Doc. Yeah, come on, I'll read you. He's close to you. I left or right. Well, which way are you facing, oh. idiots? What? Oh, I... I smell you. You're wearing Giorgio, aren't you? You better say something. Oh, I didn't have anything prepared. Let's see. I gotta run in and trim an inch off my shorts. Ooh. God, you're all right. What's going on? Okay, legs bent, butt protruded, stomach pooched out. Good. You all right? I'm okay. All right, it's gone. It was there, and it just disappeared. It's gone. It's fast. I've never seen anything that fast in my life. Where is Tim? Oh, no. Oh, no. <clears throat> Let me check this. Would you get rid of Missile Command? Oh, my God, he's not there. Wait a minute. He is not there. Viv Savage, research assistant. Boo! Damn, he's alive. <sighs> yeah. Boy, you scared the shit out of us. Every night, we had to tie Tim in the trees to keep him safe from the creature. The short, short trailer. <laughs> the Target website is boring. Uh-oh. Please, please don't be splayed. Please. No. Where do you want to go today? How about Arkansas? Mm, inadequate father, domineering mother. Uh. <laughs> Woodsy's out there and he's yelling at someone for littering. You've got monster. My computer performed an illegal operation? Here comes greater than dot. Hmm. I'll just enter go away. Oh no. The thing we're looking for is coming. Oh no. I thought you'd be in between it. Wake up. Hey, we got a visitor. Hmm. Wakes them up once an hour just to see their underpants. You got a visitor, come on. Look at this. I am doing great at this free cell game. He just passed the 200 meter perimeter right there. It's a menorah. I can't take any more of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, just well, let's just watch him a minute. Doc, are you sure it's him? Positive. I just put in 350 pounds, then I went to 400, and he was exactly where I thought he'd be. Mm -hmm. In Doc, between. Doc, let's get out of here. Wait just a minute. We're going to watch him. Doc does a lot of watching. He's still uh -huh. away yet. Look. He stopped. He stopped, Troy. Here he goes. He's moving north. Away from us now. He's riding a moose and he has a weapon. <laughs> Look at him. He's circling this camp. I don't believe it. I hope he likes my fright wig. 
turn him back. He's come across the 50 now. He's at the 40, the 30. Doc, he's headed for the camp. Ah! Hold it! Ah! Tim, stop Hold screaming. It! We lost power. Be quiet. I gotta hear it. Don't Tim. panic. Nobody panic. Tim. I gotta be able to hear it. That's important. Get that candle over here. You guys, pearls calling, 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 you guys, pearls calling. Okay, Gypsy. Pearls calling. Thank you. Yes, what now? Mike, Crow, Servo, Gypsy, Mike, I don't want to frighten you, but there's a huge, mysterious monster of some sort lurking. Oh, Bobo. His mighty odor precedes him. Bobo. Traces of his scat left like small gifts. Oh. Bobo. Stop that. The point is, you get a legend, you get lumpy tourists spending their disposable incomes. <laughs> so, to get it all going, country legend Hank Brain Guy Jr. has penned a haunting, evocative song about said beast. You put around these parts long enough and you might hear tell of some skulking creature wandering around the woolly swamp, hairy and beast-like, setting a mess a heap of trouble among the good folks living up yonder. Now some folks don't pay no mind. Other folks will tell you it don't mean no harm. Yes, Miss Fighty Lou, she'll look away with her bad eye and she'll look at you straight on with her good eye and she'll tell you she don't know nothing about it. But then she gives you a little shudder like she might. She just might know something about it. Gather around all ye friends and neighbors and tea him. There's a creature who lives in the swamp. That's it. So clearly there is some sort of creature. We really haven't hammered out all the details. Uh, please excuse us now. We have to get busy making keychains, t-shirts, little plastic figurines. Bye. Bobo! Shut up! Back into the theater! <laughs> everywhere! You put gas in the generator. Oh oh my God. God. Cut it out! We gotta be quiet, I gotta hear. This class must be fun. Everything depends on that. Give me that gun. Quick. Give me the gun. Quick. Take this light. Do the scary face thing. Right. Give me the dark. Oh my god, Bryant, not that! Listen, it may be the only chance we have. If it's him, I'm gonna try to stop him right now. With the Schaefer pen. Okay, now listen, it's important. Do not panic, because we may not ever get this chance again. Now you've gotta be quiet, so I can hear. Use your indoor voice. Listen, Tim, where's the gas? It's just outside. All right, you get the gas can. You guys stay right here and quiet. Let's go, move. Y'all yeah, be careful. I don't mean that. All right, hold it. No, don't hold that. What are you... Let me see that light. Quiet in there. My nail polish. Move to the end. Wait a minute. Hold it right there. You look beautiful in this light. Quiet. He's the one who tripped. Where's the gas can? Uh, sorry, I'm not mechanical. It's under there. All right, get it. Come on. Yeah. Okay, now you need to immolate yourself to distract the monster. <laughs> Good, make sure you get lots on the grass. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Doc, am I overdressed? Hurry. Crank it. Okay. Oh, he's got a third nipple developing. Oh. Yeah. They can play night games now. Where's the lawgiver? <laughs> oh, boy. Charcoal. My wonderful discovery. Let's kill it. You feel lucky, punk? Talk 
to me. Nah, I don't want to bend your ear. Ooh, wait in the store. Hey, a flu shot, thanks. Hey, Hotshot, you ever used a tranquilizer gun rectally before? As soon as I get free of this tree, I'm gonna be so over there. Oh. I guess the believability rating just spiked a little higher. Yeah. Wow, does that hurt. What kept attracting him to come back around our camp puzzled me. The dart gun was a mistake. He simply reached and pulled it out. It was a lewd gesture, now that I think of it. The upskin is attacked, Pigeon! Everyone was so shook up after last night, including myself, I decided to tell them one more story that was a little bit on the lighter side. <laughs> The story I've heard goes something like this. Oscar Kohlpotter was his name. <laughs> A dramatic reenactment. Just what are you looking for? <laughs> looking for the Sears Roebuck catalog. <laughs> well, I guess you're going to mess up the whole house for it? Oh, well, if I have to, I'd rather do that than mess up my pants. We <laughs> certainly don't want that. The catalog's on the back porch. Pat Conroy at home. Like he's suddenly shy about going in his pants. Oh no, the South is gonna do it again. <laughs> Little something for the lady. This was their house, their first year of marriage. Oh. <laughs> Natalie and Brilla looks different without her makeup. It's a poop emergency. She snaps into action. Hold on, Oscar! Should I back up to renew the truck? Right left. For God, hold on, Oscar! I'm coming! <laughs> is, is, is this the Miller's tale, Mike? <laughs> what the hell was that after you, Oscar? Hey, I'm fine, old Myrtle. I thought it was you. It's the wildest thing I've ever seen. Well, you gonna get that stuff off of you? Oh. Yeah, hand me that catalog in there and let me clean myself up. Oh. It's gonna take more than the catalog, Oscar. If you ask me, it's gonna take the water hose. So much, So much. How much truth there is to this story, I couldn't say. I can tell you for sure that Oscar Carl Potter is a retired attorney from Texacana and is known from time to time to have had a drinking problem. Feces. <laughs> anyway, back to the more serious side. A urine story. <laughs> I reached Deputy Williams by phone and arranged a meeting at the local coffee shop, and I decided I would not tell him or anyone at this point about seeing the creature myself last night. I advised him and the girls to do the same. Sorry, am I talking too much? I wanted to hear from Williams and his version of what he said it looked like without my input. For a transcript of the poop scene, send two ninety nine to Journal Graphics. Okay, y'all don't forget anything now. Remember to feed Tim. Morning. Good morning, sir. You must be Deputy Williams. Deputy? You Dr. Lockhart? I am. Let's get some coffee. All right. I'll just have a frappuccino. Well, that day, I... I've been fishing down on the Sulphur River. It was late in the afternoon. It wasn't dark. And I went to the shed. Oh, no, not another story about that. <sighs> I was right tired from swinging a nightstick at the skulls of suspected marijuana users all night. A stray boat had followed me home. Did you catch any fish? Yeah. Take them down the shed and clean them. I don't want them smelly things up here. Oh, they're her own children. How can she say that? I hope we're having whipped kudzu for dinner. Why is she whittling a tennis ball? You know, I kept a walking like that for quite a while. The end. <laughs> At that point, my hair had blanketed my football head. Suddenly, I was attacked by a Muppet. <laughs> Where's the money, you son of a bitch? <laughs> now, Bobby, you give the fish back to the nice man. Sorry, he just started on the riddling. Shazam! No one believes me. 
My wife doesn't even think I've seen such a thing. That thing was huge. His eyes glaring out under that hairy forehead. Mm -hmm. He had a pointed skull. Um, I I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. What? <laughs> mm. You think it meant you any harm? No. Well. I think he just smelled dead fish and just came up to investigate. I can see doing that. By the way, have you talked to old man Crenshaw? I told you never to bring him up. Don't believe I've ever heard of him. He's no man. I bet he's lived on the bottoms all his life. Sam and Timothy? He'd be able to tell you okay. something. <laughs> Later, that dull story. All right, you guys, it's ready. Come and get it. What do we have? Bologna sandwiches and pork and beans. Great. One of my favorites. Well, it's not one of mine. Huh? Oh, I didn't see you there. You're camouflaged. Tanya, do you have my blush? 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 What the hell is blush? No, I don't have your blush. Besides, I don't want to be down here anyway. Just go into town and get a motel. I don't understand anything she says. Are we going in the swamp with you guys? Not today. You're going to leave us a rifle, aren't you? What is she saying now? A rifle. You wouldn't know what to do with it if I did. To hell with you and your stupid wish to be protected. Wanna bet? Ooh. Tim and I began searching behind the camp, <laughs> hoping we might find hair or even a small blood sample from where the creature had torn off through the woods. We only assumed he had torn off, though. It's possible he beat cheeks or busted a hump. All right, one of these scenes. Hey, calm down. Oh, I hope they wrestle. Can you drive the jeep? Sure. Why? This is crazy. What do you mean by that? We're fools for just sitting here. Yes, you could be wrestling. Who says that thing only comes out at night? Now I can't understand her. They could be watching us right now. Yes, he's waiting for you to wrestle! These fools are fixing to ride. Something about food for a fistful of rats? Okay. We'll go with that. Oh, good, oh, good, oh, good. They're going to drive to some place where they can wrestle. Okay, <laughs> dial it back. I just want them to wrestle. He sends his pure, sweet love. Trooper Williams left out one important fact. He said nothing about the foul odor the creature admits, which was still very much present many hours after Tim and I were in the forest. In fact, wherever we went, there was a foul odor. He must have just been at every place we looked. Mud! Do you realize what this means? Shh, Mike said stop it. Tanita Tickerum, naturalist. I knew we should have stayed at the camp. Well, I don't believe we came this way. I don't remember these mud holes. We had to have. We went through several mud holes. But not these. They're too deep. Foggy, you believe this? Do you know how to put that thing in four-wheel drive? Oh. Hell no, I don't. I've never been in one of these things until I came off on this stupid trip. So you just better hold on. Hey, they're using their Jeep to do things. I thought you only drive those things to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. It's the Arkansas remake of Wages of Fear. Checking on the land they bought from the Clintons. Someday, we turn a giant mud pit into a giant mud pit. Oh, must have hit a gusher. Yes! Oh, no, it's she's unzipping the car. You've done it now. Me? It was your idea to go riding around in the first place. There's an easy way to solve this. <laughs> damn thing in four-wheel drive and let's get out of here i don't know how to put the damn thing in four-wheel drive uh darn thing ladies maybe there's a manual here that will tell us how to do it it's gonna take more than four wheels to get us out of this hole like about eight eight wheels so it's come to this quit joking we've got to figure this thing out it's getting late i'm not joking the mud's almost up to our doors mm. look here it is this is all we have to do. Get naked and wrestle! That's enough now. Come on. There. 
That should be in four-wheel drive. Told you, Servo. Crank it up and let's get out of here, okay? This movie's very damp. I think it's one of our dampest movies. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, 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 is this a flashback? I'm getting really confused. Oh, they're stuck in their own makeup. There's a red scarf floating in the air. Oh, no, it's her. She's camouflaged. Camouflaged, yeah. No use. We're going to have to walk out of here. My God. Don't even suggest such a thing. It'll be dark soon. They've synchronized, so they're both crabby. Mm. I'm open for your suggestions. Well, blow the horn. Blow the horn. Do I look like I know how to do that? What good is that going to do? Well, Tim and Brian are down here somewhere. Maybe they'll hear it. Uh, Tim's too thin to hear. Tim and Brian have probably been back at the camp for hours. Resting, eating, dry, comfortable. Don't tell me that stuff. Sing it instead. Trade places with me. I want to try. No way. You're just going to make it worse. Yeah, well, you're flat. Well, we're lost, remember? I'm not going to go start walking off in these woods looking for a camp that we have no idea where it is. Hey, there's a point of view monster headed right for them. We'd like to thank the legend for allowing us to place a camera in his helmet. Might get a little cool before the night's over. We do have a heater in this thing, don't we? Yep. I believe we do. Mm -hmm. How much gas we got? We have E gallons. Over half a tank. Good. Wait, which half? Today's Tuesday. They should find us before the weekend. And we run out of gas. You got me into this mess. I want to get out and I want to go home. All we got to do now is find a tombstone to mark the spot where you buried us. I think the normally crisp Charles B. Pierce writing style has fallen apart here. Ah, not looking for them is great. <sighs> He's smoking a swizzle stick. <laughs> it's almost 8 o'clock. Time for Darma and Greg. We're going to have to go find them. How? Well, it's 15 miles out of this bottom. Wow, you could file papers in that part he has. They have our only transportation. Where the hell could they be? Leslie probably talked Tanya into going into town. Probably looking for something besides bologna to eat. Tim's humor falls a little flat. <laughs> Look at that makeup. It looks like she's looking out of a charred log. What was what? That sound we just heard. It sounded like a wolf. A wolf? Do you think it will survive? You mean there's wolves in these woods too? Also snakes, bobcats, alligators. That's enough. Don't tell me. Oh, wolves? Where? Where? Bobcats? Alligators? No, oh, no. God, there's a winch on the front. What's that? Something to get you unstuck with. Well, why in the hell haven't you mentioned it before now? You didn't ask. Besides, I don't know how to use it. Stupid, we have a manual right here. Hand me the flashlight. Perhaps they could fashion their eyeliner into a crude spear for protection. Okay, it says you keep the motor running. You pull, keep the vehicle in neutral. You pull out on the cable until... And then it just ends. Now I'm lost. Where the hell am I? There we go. Want me to get that windshield for you? Apparently, Candy's made a hiking boot. Here it is, right here. The ground, right where it's supposed to be. Hmm, there's a series of symbols that carry no meaning. See, there's a cable right there. You just pull out on that. Mm, they're lucky they get cable out here. I figured I'd be doing all the work. I'm the Mack Truck Bulldog. Rough. Two butch-looking women not in a Subaru? Something's wrong here. Yeah. Mike, Mike, she's in the mud. They have to wrestle. Oh. <laughs> All her woodland friends are laughing at her. McClintock. Luck, woman. If 
If you want to get out of here, you better get down here and help me. Well, I do want to get out of here. But I enjoy seeing you in the mud. It's a difficult choice. Well, now that they're in the mud, I'm actually feeling kind of ashamed of myself. Is this really what I wanted? That's the brake cable. You're pulling it right out of the car. Ranger Rick goes berserk. They're not shooting day for night. It's more like 4.30 for 5 o'clock. <laughs> okay, I'll go talk to the truck. Now they stumble on the Rose Law Firm billing records. Well, my boy and I are here to help you, ladies. They're making blueberry vermicelli. Hmm. You know, I'm at least as tense as I was during a very Brady Christmas. Hmm. Oh my God, Leslie, there he is. He is? He must have a better camera than me. I can't see a thing. Hmm. Oh, they must have seen a swamp mouse. They should get a swamp chair and stand on it. Well, my rowdy friends never showed up. Doc, what time is it now? Almost 11. I feel something's bad wrong. I think I'm feeling better about us, though. Yeah, so do I. I'll tell you what, let's do. I don't think we can wait any longer. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. I take the rifle. We're going to the swamp. Two ant sections are attacking. I got a new chest hair today. Software by Roy Bob's Feed and Software to Texarkana. Is he back? <laughs> no, but the girls are. Are you sure? Now, but you see how slow that's moving? Remember, Tanya just had reconstructive knee surgery. That's him, all right. Get over there, man. Get on the bed. Put on something lazy. We're gonna play this out. And I have to be on the bed? Mm -hmm. It's him, all right. Just relax now. Let's just watch this a second. I think it's Wright's writing piggyback. Playing it out. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, it sure is playing out, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, we're, we're playing it out. Don't stay on the bed. Come in, ladies. And so the completely pointless stretch of movie whimpers out like a small, dying rat. <laughs> oh, you know, this is almost too painful, this playing it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to tell me about it? I'm going to let her. Well, thank you, Tanya. Our adventures started in base camp. The rummy Punjabs were all around us. We stuck to Jake. Up your, um, what's that word? That figures. That ain't all. Did you wreck it? No. We saw it. You saw what? I knew they wouldn't believe us. Damn it, oh. Doc, we saw it. You and Tim saw it. We believed you. Why can't you believe us? Why can't I believe them? Was it my toilet training? Hmm. Tanya, did you see it? Yeah. She wants me. It wasn't that I didn't believe them. I guess I just wanted to get back at them a little bit for what they had put Tim and I to for the last six hours. Hmm? Oh, you can't surf in Arkansas, foul. <laughs> Unfortunately, he is the lifeguard. I wouldn't drown the rheumatism jacking up. Play in the sand and shut up. Howdy. Howdy. Going hunting or fishing? Well, we're heading down the river. Well, how are you traveling? You wading or riding? <laughs> Hope to be riding. Have you rent any boats? I got one. I can rent you five dollars an hour, and I've got a larger boat. I can rent you twenty-five dollars a day. Everything furnished. We'll take the one for all day. Good. I'll get you one. You all go right down there and wait. I'll, we'll bring it around. I well, just gotta build it first. Okay, let's 
move them out. Careful, what are you doing? Oh, I've taken up whittling, Mike. Oh, uh, whittling, like the guy in the movie. Well, not exactly, no. You see, whittling technology has been stagnant, so we saw an opportunity. We moved in, bought a little outfit in Kentucky. Hey, why is that line stop? I don't the care. Get it going. Well, now we've got 14,000 employees and 23 plants, mostly overseas. I still got the one in the States. PR, you know. <laughs> yeah, wow, you know, all this machinery, all these people, uh, and what do you make? Well, listen, the product has always been good. We have not altered the product at all. We provide the same stick that's a little narrower at one end. Go ahead, keep that one. Thanks. Oh, that's Brazilian mahogany, by the way. Whittles fairly well. Mm. Brazilian mahogany? Servo, you're decimating the rainforest to make these? Oh, listen, Sting, you want to see the cost figures? Uh, you know, I guess got to say, it's, uh, it's sort of lost some of the charm, some of the folksiness. Yeah, hold that on. Hey, get back to work! Oh, yeah, sure, like that's going to happen. You call the Pinkertons for me, will you, Mike? i got to go get the hose. Uh, we'll be right back. Yeah, you, you. Take a swim, you must. <laughs> Look at that, a whole beach full of research assistants. <laughs> <laughs> and hut! How far is it down to Crenshaw? Well, according to Deputy Williams, it's about two miles downriver. Canyon, we should have brought our swimsuit so we could stay for a while. Instead of going off on this stupid safari. She envies my smoked aviator glasses. I hear the boat coming, let's go. It's really huge below decks. Now this is the boat they should have taken over that mountain in Fitzcarraldo. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't know a fella by the name of Crenshaw, would you? Everybody up down this river knows Crenshaw. How far down river is it to his place? All by crow side or by boat? <laughs> by boat. Well, I'd say about three miles. First cabin on the right. Thank you very much. Let's load up. The first motor. <laughs> hey, Mark Knopfler is hot. I'm going to enjoy the serenity of nature. <laughs> Want to go buzz the children's beach? This is great! I'm polluting the water and I'm making noise! Is this a Bond film all of a sudden? Want to help us oppose jet ski regulation? It's fun that there are men. Oh, he's gonna hit a tree now. Too bad. Yeah, shame. <laughs> go, Boggy, go, Boggy, get him, get him. Get him. Oh, hmm. that's a damn shame, huh? Maybe we'll circle back and chop him up now. <laughs> okay, let's see who rides who now. <laughs> They're gonna start finding headless dead jet skiers all over the county highway. <laughs> go back and get help, boy. Yeah, take away your jet ski. Let's see how you like the water now. Damn. Oh well, uh, given jet ski odds, he's only got a couple of weeks left anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was the third of December. The tiny muddy. <laughs> These river bottoms are truly a sight to behold. Whoa. <laughs> As we traveled the river that day, it made me feel good. Here the air is clean, reminding me that much of this country is still and should remain unspoiled. As blue smoke poured from All my mouth. wildlife, moving water and vegetation, I was beginning to understand how easy it is for this creature to survive and hide from man. I'm convinced now that he is more man-like than animal. <laughs> in every reported sighting, He's always been seen in an upright position on his back two legs. Bears, gorillas, orangutans, and such other animals can walk about on two legs, but under stress or strain will go down on all fours to run. When I'm stressed out, I'll go down on all fours and run too. 
Crenshaw's. Be careful, he could be practicing his short game. I'm going to take a break from my narration here, but I will be available for questions. On the wings of a dove. Wings of a dove. I put Tim in front to absorb the first hail of bullets. Mom! Yes, these river bottoms are... Everybody help! Knock on the door, Tim. Let's see if anybody answers. Oh, is that what I should do? How novel. Tim pulls reconnaissance. Dictator for life, Charles B. Pierce. I don't think anybody's home. Yes, these river bottoms. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't like this at all. Oh, that's a change. That could be a mad goat. Yes, I'm mad. Mad! Hey! Wow. What are y'all doing here? Well, it's the Berserker residence. You looking for something to steal? Nope, not exactly. Saw your plate from the river. Thought we'd stop for a minute. Well, boy, if everybody stopped here that saw my place in the river, all I'd be doing is entertaining. Run into Trooper Williams in town the other day, and he suggested we stop down and see you. He said nothing about your marvelous breasts. Trooper Williams, how's he doing? He's doing fine. Doc, I think we'd better head back home. Is this the one they call Tim? Come on down here, sonny. Sit down. My bark's a whole lot worse than my bite. Y'all have a seat. Doc, why don't you take the skin chair? How are you, young lady? My name is... Bryant Lockhart. Dr. Lockhart. How you doing, cousin? Fine. This is Tanya, Leslie, and Tim. Hi, girl. Hey. Randy Johnson's dad. You want some, gal? Give me some. Hi, girl. Oh, God, she thinks it's chew. Tisk, tisk. You mad, ma'am? Me, I'm married to my work. That's always a man's kind of woman. Uh, Mr. Crenshaw? I'm planning an abduction. You been down here long? I sure have. I buried my truck back over here in 46, and I ain't been no way in here except the river since then. Yeah, me too. We're from the university, and we're studying man. Well, boy, if you come down here to study me, you better be prepared to stay for a while. <laughs> Huh? No, sir, but I would like to ask you some questions, if I could. Uh-huh. Yeah, let me just show you one cheek. You ain't with the Revenue Boys, are you, son? Uh, no, but I was a beastie boy. Because if you are, I'll throw down on you for nine guards can go to Minna. Hmm. Why nine guards? Nope, like I said, we're from the university. Studying the Boggy Creek Creature. Why does my head hurt? A Boggy Creek Creature, huh? A uh haw -huh. Well, I've known that all my life. He's right back over around them woods. Hmm? You ever seen him? Yeah, I've seen him all the time. He's out here yelling and bawling and carrying on. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. They woke me up around here one morning, a banging and a beating on the tub. The man can't get a bit of sleep around here for him. I think he's getting the creature mixed up with the Almond Brothers. What did the little one look like? Well, the little one ended up with my features. Well, cousin, the little one looks just like the big one. <laughs> Man, that stain. Yeah, I guess. Here, yeah, girl, you want some of this? No, it's a naturally occurring cheese from his body. What's the matter, you girl? You sick? I am. I love a woman who vomits. That's your man, kind of woman. I'm gonna go check on Tanya. Well, hell, there's another one. Looks like there's a storm coming up. What do you think, Tim? And a bad one, too. I think we better head back down the river. Tim, you wanna... Put your shirt on. Man. Get the girls. <laughs> It'll be dark here in a little bit. Boy, you don't wanna get on that river with a storm coming up like this. That water draws lightning. Why not just go ahead and kill you? Well, I got to go tend to my fires. Wow.
Just spreading my filth. Clearing land? Nope. Get a storm in these trees? Mm, tooth. Nope. None of my business, is it? Nope. You can wait in the house with a girl if you want to. Grab yourself a broccoli rubber band for your head. Oh my God, look at the bodies. Oh. I am the NRA. Oh, I sat on a dead pig. Oh, come here. What's he doing? Never dig too deep into what this guy is doing. Mm -mm. What'd you find out? Nothing yet. Except he's up to no good. So we're gonna have to spend the night here? The way the storm is, and it's getting worse, we'll be here for the night. Doc, oh, here he comes. Okay, get over here, sit down. Quick, come on. Be quiet. <laughs> they, they were acting casual, now they're all stiff and weird. If they're not acting casual, I'll have to kill them. Well, I got company. Suppose I should prop up the outhouse. Oh dear, I'm immodest, Teehee. Oh, I'll let one of them know it. I could just die. You say you're a doctor, boy? That's right. Then you must be pretty good at patching up folks that's all busted. Not that kind of doctor. Who's hurt? I thought all you doctors were good at doctoring on sick folks. He's got me. Let me tell you something, cousin. The Chunky Rembrandt. Me and you got to have a talk. About how to get rid of unwanted body hair. And all nice and private. Their eyes lock. I think we're overdue. Come on over here, boy. Hunker down. I'm going to show you something. You'll never hunker down within 10 yards of this guy. That shocks my full military wear. He's way cleaner than you. Look, my dad will come up with the ransom. He's a wealthy gorilla. Hey, you dressed him in little one-strap overalls. My God, man. You kidnapped Gene Shallot. Why have you had this? I caught him a few days ago in my trip. What do you think about him? I think you're crazy. That's what I think. Kind of a fun crazy, though. He's almost dead. It's weak. You've been feeding it what you eat. That's what I got you here for, boy. I want you to patch him up. We'll need clean towels. Never mind. Let me tell you something, old man. Old? I was carded yesterday. That's why that thing's been going crazy lately. Jumping on people. Been around our camp, followed the girls. Say. He's after this little one. That's why you're building these fires around this camp, isn't it? Because it's afraid of the fire. Isn't it? You finally smartened enough, cousin. You figured it out. We gotta get this to a doctor. Uh, hopefully not an Arkansas doctor. <laughs> ah, Crenshaw, you fascinate me. Well, there is stuff living in his bathroom. Doc, what is it? Right, hang on, I'm gonna belch the alphabet here. Well, I finally got that gorilla down. Lord of mercy, I gotta get to my fires. Doc, what happened in there? I made a pass at Crenshaw, okay? You saw, saw what? I saw the little creature. Uh, no! no. You don't no. Have it. Oh, I singed my pit hair. Boy, Thor has really hit the skids. I don't want to see it. No woman should have to see the little creature. You stay here, Leslie. Watch it, old man, out here. You guys come with me. Okay. Don't try to sneak in any dialogue here, Tim. 
Somebody must be burning his bra. Here you go. Now Crenshaw jumps in and just tries to burn off all his ticks. You know, with the effort it takes to balance it on your shoulder, would you just put your shirt on? Right on. Legendary creatures get all the chicks. He ain't gonna make it if we don't get him to a doctor. I'm an expert in undiscovered monkeys. Storm or no storm, we have to get him out of here. Help! <laughs> oh no, my perm is highly flammable. What? There's another weird guy over there with a fire. I like this weird guy better. <coughs> There's a skid mark on the ceiling. Well, stop hearing stuff. Mm -hmm. Kent Herbeck, three months after retirement. Just wait a minute. He's on the porch. Be quiet. Good job. Hold it, man! Spread up! Oh, no, don't do that. Yeah. Mark the fire, man. He's coming in here on it. Put your shells back in your pocket. You better let me kill him now. You're not gonna fire that gunman. I mean it. Hold it. Don't cross me this time, old man. In the house. Right now. Don't make me sick, Tim, on you. Get him. Okay, Rain. Everybody's happy. <laughs> Tim. Man, check this. Off campus research at the University of Arkansas. Yeah, man, give me the gun. You don't know what you're doing, boy. Don't let me tell you again, old man. Give me the gun! Crenshaw's using his bathroom rug as an air freshener. Yeah, yeah. You sit down. That chair. Get real comfortable, okay? You asked for it. Ugh. Stay right there, old man. Hey, look, I'm 28. Tim, hold this gun. It's heavy. Take this. No. You know how to use it. No, I don't. You stay here, old man. Watch him close. Hello, Tim. <laughs> Come on, boy. Give me that gun. Don't be as stupid as that doctor. No way. Ah, no way. Tim's instant catchphrase. <laughs> Snap into a Slim Jim. <laughs> oh, it's just Ron Perlman. Oh, man, I killed this little creature. Oh, hi! Hold it. Congratulations, Mrs. Creek. It's a boy. Let's go, Richard. Not anymore. Hmm? I know you don't understand, but I want to give you what you came for. Boggy Arnold creature, where have you been? Did you give him his allergy medication? Do you have his teddy human also? By the way, it really stinks in here. <laughs> give me that gun, boy. Tim comes through in the clutch. Gotta plug a red man for you here. Well, give me the chair, boy. Sorry, great grandfather. Well, I got stuff in my pockets too. Aha! I'm insufferable. Okay, um, now what? Hmm. Yeah, you want to live up River of Crenshaw, believe me. <laughs> Tim found a hollow spot in the tree and slept there. Sunday Times ever show up? 
I, uh, I rolled over on your rat last night. I'm sorry. Tim was playing with these. You should really lock these up. Within 45 seconds, he kills everyone. Yep. Old boy. Or old man, whatever. You right about one thing. That was an unnatural swelling. How's that? That thing ought to be left alone. I won't touch it anymore. Mm -mm. To remain free and live in the wild. God bless you, half-man, half-pig. Crenshaw was not telling me anything new. Hmm? For the last few days, I knew this was the way it had to be. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to fall into the same category as other people have done in this area for years and years. Ken Star Witness. I just felt for some special reason what I saw and what I now know I wanted to keep to myself. It wasn't really a matter of whether anyone would believe me or not. Sure. I guess you could say it was a matter of keeping him a mystery. Right. Because this is where he belongs. It's like the old gentleman in the store said to me, Boy, there ain't no monsters around here. And you know something? They were right. He's a part of nature living in harmony in one of America's last great wildernesses. Crenshaw? That's why this legend will continue. For I feel God intended it that way. So the once great monster studies department went under. Tanya and Leslie brought me up on charges, of course. Tim just wandered off and we haven't seen him in years. And then, Bob, and then, and then, you know what, you know what, then this hairy guy put me in a room and he gave me bacon to eat because that's all he had. And then, and then I know, and then, I know, I'm sorry, son. And, 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 and then, and then I, I, I just had to sleep on hay and, and the hay got all messed up in my, my hair and then the big guy smelled. And then, and then a bunch of other people came in and they were nice, except one of them wasn't and there was this real skinny kid with no shirt. And then, and then this girl screamed a lot. I know, I know. Hey, hey, Mad Dog provided by. Mike, you told me there was no place we could get a Mad Dog. <laughs> Gosh. The sign from above on the wings of a dove. And then, you know what else? Uh, there was a big... Um, um, a, a big blue reindeer and he was nice to me and he gave me all the presents in the world. Really, Bobby? Yeah, his name was Snowhead and he lived in a big house with a million other reindeer where they ate cookies. Uh-huh, what kind of cookies, honey? Chocolate. Uh-huh. Yeah, every movie from the South is gonna thank a trailer service at some point. <laughs> on the wings of a dog. Good night, Tim, wherever you are. Lord of mercy, I gotta tend to my fires. Oh, hey, cousin. Hi, Crow. Uh, hey, permit me to ask what may be a stupid question. You go right ahead, boy. Uh, why are you yet again setting fire to the bridge? Well, you finally caught on, old man. I got me a baby critter, and I'm trying to keep his big old mama critter away till you can patch him up. Ah, you got you a baby what? Hey, I'm getting bored of landing the straw in there, Crow. I don't want to play captive baby boggy creek creature and big smelly mountain man anymore. Yeah, I'm kind of tired of it, too. Yeah. Hey, let's go play Wounded Baby Unicorn and Skinny Sociopathic Janitor. Hooray! Yay! <laughs> hey, guys, could you put out the fire first before you uh, get to... The... Oh, Pearl's calling. Could... It's really rather big. Could you... Guys, I need a... Hello, Nell Slob, and welcome to our Legend of Forester Swamp Tourist Gift Shop. Oh, our first customer. Hello, and welcome to Everything's Legend of Forrester Swamp. How may I help you, young Moppet? My mama thinks she saw him in the swamp once, Mr. White Guy. I saved up so as I can get her something for her birthday to remember that. Uh, Brain Guy, go do the shelving in the stock room. But I need the commission. Scram. Well, uh, small person. Did you know that scientists calculate the creature's believability rating as quite high? Wow. Yes, but sadly, no one has ever had a face-to-face -face encounter with one of these mythological beasts. 
Margaret, can I get out of my room? It's boring being a legend. <laughs> hey, he's just a talking gorilla. No, What's he's... the big deal about a talking gorilla? Not really. You're a bad lady. You tried oh. to trick my mommy. No. Oh. And you're a stupid legend. Oh yeah, well so are you, kid. <laughs> really zinged into that little brat, huh? Oh. <laughs> hey, it's funny seeing you would pay for a change lawgiver. I tell you, nothing hurts quite like getting kicked in the ankle, does it? Oh. <laughs> I saw the little creature. No! Wait, no! Wait a minute! No.